Hi, so I'm going to talk about the project what the, which is a collaboration between uh, UCL, uh, Bristol University and uh, Reading slash Met Office. So first of all, yeah, there was a, a workshop yesterday. So people that attended that, there's going to be some overlap with this talk. It's the same, the same uh, framework I'm going to talk about. Uh, so benchmarking is not something new for HPC. Uh, we always want to know the performance of uh, certain HPC systems, certain applications, uh, but and, and to be able to make informed decisions for future software and hardware. Uh, this has just become even more so uh, in the quest for exascale with the advent of many more heterogeneous technologies that uh, we need to systematically benchmark. Uh, as is traditionally done, uh, benchmarking is a very manual and error prone uh, process. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, configurations that are system dependent and stay in the heads of uh, the people that have run the benchmarking and then they leave and we don't know how to reproduce the benchmarks. And But at the same time, the tools do exist, uh, open source tools to automate this manual effort and to be able to record and track and document uh, this process. And why is it so complicated? I mean, superficially, you should just uh, run a program, measure how long it took, how hard can that be? Uh, well, in, on HPC systems, things do get more complicated. So uh, should I be using this for pointing? Um, so yeah, uh, on HPC systems, they get more complicated. Uh, there is many different systems that we want to run the code. There are many ways to compile, to build the code, different options, different compilers, different ways to use the hardware, and many different ways to present the results. This is on the analysis and many actual benchmarks to choose from. So this very quickly becomes uncontrollable. So this project uh, is part of the Excalibur hardware en enabling software um, theme. And the, the point is to address this and have uh, reproducible and systematic uh, benchmarking. And has four strands. Uh, most of it is the benchmarking framework and suit, but uh, uh, collaborators are also uh, developing uh, performance portability benchmarks and conjugate gradient solver benchmarks. And there's some attempts at training and knowledge exchange. So I'm gonna start with the framework and suit, which answers to the question of automation and reproducibility and is developed by UCL and several benchmark contributors. So what are the components of the benchmark framework? Uh, the benchmarks itself, uh, themselves, which are applications uh, that we run and we want to see how performant they are. Uh, something to build them with, which is uh, the most painful step of the process that we're using SPAC to automate. Uh, something to run them with and capture the outputs, which are the figures of merit, that's the forms, sorry for the acronym, and the configuration of the system when it runs, and we use Reframe for this. It's nice to have something to analyze and visualize the results, so we are developing some post-processing scripts and library, and curation for the results. This is not part of this project, that the curation, but it should be the next step. So very quickly, uh, the different components. So uh, if you haven't heard about Spark, very quickly, it is not a build system, it's a package manager, which means it manages the dependencies and automates the builds. Uh, it's very well supported. It's developed by US national labs and it's uh, crucial for the US Exascale project. So pretty robust software. It supports a variety of build systems underneath. And what is very useful is that it maintains a repository of existing build recipes for popular code. So if you want to run a st standard benchmark, you don't need to write its own Spark specification. There's like 7,000 of them in the repo right now. And people can contribute more. And it supports customizable environments, which means that different builds for different environments are neatly maintained uh, and, and they're tractable. Reframe is a Python framework for regression tests and benchmarks, uh, specifically for HPC systems, and was developed by uh, CSES in Switzerland and ETH Zurich. And the important thing is that it separates the configuration for the benchmark, the test itself, 
from the system it runs on. And this is quite crucial because once we manage something to run, or once we have a configuration for one system, all the applications can use that configuration. Uh, it's built specifically for HPC systems, which means it abstracts the interaction uh, with the scheduler and the build system itself. It's a flexible Python interface and the tests are easy to parameterize and tag. And for post-processing, we are developing a Python library independent of Reframe uh, that can either be used in user scripts, the components in user scripts, or we're providing also full scripts to post-process the results. The components being uh, parsing the output of Reframe into Pandas data frame and configure the analysis and the plotting via a YAML file and then the plotting scripts themselves. So uh, all that is in uh, this repository uh, on GitHub. Uh, currently it's, it's installable as a Python package. Uh, there's some CI uh, testing of the installation of the framework itself and running a very simple example benchmark to make sure something runs. Uh, there's a suite of, um, suite of uh, apps there, uh, several systems configurations, the post-processing scripts and documentation that also how to run it and also how to contribute. And starting from the system configuration, which is the most complex component, and but as I said, once it's done for a system, then all the benchmarks can use that. And this is a huge benefit we get uh, with your frame. Uh, you see in the list here, there's a bunch of SPAC uh, environments for uh, popular uh, UK uh, computers and clusters. And contributions are welcome to add more. So uh, what one would need to contribute, I mean, for every system you have a SPAC environment in there. And then in the reframe configuration file, I don't know if you can see the, the path here, you can browse the repository and see all those things. Uh, there is a system definition there that sets up the scheduler, the compute resources. This is the specific one for Archer 2, for example. And for every system you would add, you need to add a part like this. Uh, for benchmark apps, uh, this repo contains a collection uh, of, of benchmarks contributed by the UK scientific community. This is not an authoritative collection. We don't uh, gatekeep what is going on and what is not. Whatever people want to contribute and they find useful is in there. Um, and you'll see, if you see from the list, there's some well-known synthetics, micro benchmarks, proxy apps, and full applications. This. Uh, it's important to point out here the way Reframe works. A benchmark is a Python class that tells Reframe how to build it and run it. It's, it's not the code itself, it's not in this repo, just the recipe that fetches it. Um, and yeah, of course, contributions are very welcome. So putting all this together, how one would use this framework, you clone the repo, you install it using pip. Uh, one would need to clone and set up SPAC separately because an up-to-date SPAC version is needed. And usually in the HPC systems, there are older versions. So you need to build your own, but it's, it's not hard. And then the benchmark would be executed with a line like this, reframe, the name of the benchmark you want to run, performance report. And you'll need a few more command line options depending on the system you're running on and whatnot. Once you do that, behind the scenes, Reframe uh, builds the application, creates the, the submit scripts, submits them to the correct scheduler on your system you're on, takes the results back and reports them to you. All this done behind the scenes, abstracted. And the output, the standard output would look something like that. This is running an example, the example uh, benchmark we used in the, in the, in the workshop yesterday, uh, Sombrero. And after reporting the versions, blah, blah, blah. It's, so it spawned four checks for one thing because this, this um, benchmark is parameterized, but the user didn't need to do anything. It just it reframe itself created four and it reported one, two, three, four. The value you care about is this, the performance, the flops. And, and this is the figure of merit. In addition, it creates a performance log 
It's very messy. It's not for human consumption. So it's just a, an output file with columns of values of interest. And then our post-process scripts will digest that perflog with a very simple YAML configuration um, of what it is you want to plot, which columns you want to plot, what filters, and produces a plot. So all this is still a work in progress. Uh, we, we welcome contributions of benchmarks and systems. There's more details on the repo. And we would like to capture more of the environment and the SPAC spec into the output itself and take care of it in the post-processing. This is something that's missing right now, but people are interested to connect performance with how the system was at that moment. And the post-processing itself is a work in progress. We will add specialized types of plots. Um, we want to embed the plot. So this is a stat static HTML that generates. We would like to embed it in something more interactive and also spit out tables. So that's for the, the framework and suit. The other strand was the performance portability that answers the question of systematic benchmarking. What do I mean by performance portability is the performance of a certain app benchmark on different architectures, coding paradigms, compilers. So first we need an appropriate benchmark that is written in all these paradigms. And the one that our collaborators in Bristol have written is bubble stream. Uh, which benchmarks achievable memory bandwidth. It's based on the stream benchmark. I don't know people, it's standard for HPC community. People might have heard of it. And it allocates arrays on the heap and uh, the problem size is only known at runtime, which is not the case for stream. And, and it's written in all the program models that we're interested in. And it's based on like simple vector operations and the memory uh, operations that happen during that. So the output of a performance portability study looks something like this. The exact numbers, don't worry about it, but what is shown here is the, uh, the, achieve, the percentage of memory bandwidth of the maximum achievable in every system for all the systems here in the y-axis uh, with different programming paradigms. It's a busy plot and it took months and months and months and months to produce with manual scripts that they had. So, so the benchmarking framework comes to the rescue. Now BubbleStream is part of our suit and you can run any of those uh, different configurations by specifying the correct tag, the correct spec spec. Uh, here you see this is the case for CUDA with GCC 9.2 and run it on the appropriate system that has the hardware you care about. And importantly, all this is written out in the performance output. So you don't need to write it down separately, but, uh, reframe, uh, reports all this to you. And they have, with the help of Intel, uh, they have collected all the scripts they use for plotting and processing to create that beauty uh, into a library, which operates on Pandas data frames. So it can very easily click on whatever our post-processing is doing, which is putting stuff in Pandas data frames. The other uh, benchmarks that our collaborators are contributing is a conduit gradient solver benchmark. Now, whereas performance portability probes performance uh, for different platforms and coding paradigms, uh, this kind of exercise probes performance for different implementations and algorithms. And this was developed by Reading University. I don't know much about this. Uh, so the conjugate gradient solver was chosen as a good example that it's a component of many applications. And so its performance is of interest, is a good proxy. And the existing benchmark HP, HPCG was used. And so the existing implementation is is limited the performance by indirect memory access. There's also a vendor optimized implementation that you can just use the executable, you cannot mess with that. So what uh, our Redding collaborators did, they added uh, two new implementations that probe a different underlying algorithm for the same solver. So uh, one matrix free that they implemented in HPCG and then an unstructured grid and matrix-free implementation, which is of interest to the meteorological application. So it's different from HPCG. 
And yeah, I think those and those um, new benchmarks will give us the opportunity to study the performance of different implementations and algorithms. So perfect, I have time. So going to the last step, the training and knowledge exchange. Um, so we have this nice framework and suit and new benchmarks, all cool. We want people to use them and see them and yeah. So how do, who is this community interested in benchmarking? I was debating about the title of this, should I do this or herding the cats? I think that's more appropriate. Uh, it's the community interested in this kind of thing we think is a large disparate one because it would be application developers that want to benchmark the performance of their applications on different platforms to make decisions of how to proceed. RSCs that work with them, systems maintainers to see how the system is doing as a function of time and people involved in procurement of new systems and everyone in between. And some of those people are under the umbrella of large organizations, so they're easy to find, the Iraq Met Office, huh? or smaller dispersed research groups that are almost impossible to track. So uh, we would like people to contribute benchmarks. As I said before, this is a big welcome to everyone and use the suit as users and request or contribute new functionality to be added, and especially for post-processing, which is in heavy development right now. How we're doing this, so none of this has been done systematically so far, and uh, would appreciate the help. And so what we've done, we developed training materi materials and deliver the workshop, well, the first one was yesterday. I think it went well. And we will try to present this, this uh, training in other events adjacent to other conferences, like Excalibur Wide on CI UK in December, and we'd like to make the materials available in some standard training collection. Uh, we maintain close relationships with the Dirac community who are contributing benchmarks and a uh, very good collaboration with them. And we try to have visibility within Excalibur uh, hardware and uh, enabling software and program wide. So try to give talks or demos and hope for the best and try to use whatever mechanism Excalibur has for knowledge exchange. Uh, but that, that project should go beyond Excalibur. It's all the UK HPC community can use that. And we maintain expand connections we have with individual groups throughout previous past Excalibur channels. So Cambridge, HPCC and so on and so forth. Uh, so yeah, this is a big open thing that... Uh, yeah, it's a touching on community building. And I'm early because that's it. Thank you very much. Um, I really want to have this works by now, but if you've got any questions, please submit them through the Slido. Um, and there's a couple there already. So the first one I've got is if the application you want to benchmark is already installed centrally, do you recommend rebuilding it every time you run the benchmark or reusing an existing installation? So the way uh, our framework is, it builds it with Spark, but Refrain can handle also fetching it from where it's already built. Uh, but, I mean, the idea is to capture updates in the system itself and, and the algorithm, so it might be a good idea to rebuild. Mosay, if you have an op an <laughs> anything to add? No, my comment is that the guest like to make it, uh, make the benchmark available on different systems. Yeah. The, the idea of this framework is to make these benchmarks available on different systems. So if you want to run one application which is only on one system, you can still use the frame, but maybe it doesn't fit well here. Yeah. In which case we have another question, which is why did you choose SPAC over easy build? Um, and are there any plans to include easy build within the future? Uh, I think uh, SPAC gives more flexibility to have uh, different, with, with the SPAC spec, to have uh, the executable being built with different configurations, different versions of compilers, different versions of MPI, so on and so forth, and have all those accessible, which I think easy build is not that flexible uh, in that direction, I think, is it built is more for a uh, production. Like you have a version and 
that's what you always want to run. Whereas in this case, we want to be able to be to be flexible. Uh, that's why SPAC was chosen. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a standard used in the US Exascale project as well. That was a, a, a factor that uh, kind of weighed towards uh, SPAC. Uh, how reliant is uh, all this methodology on internet connectivity? For instance, how hard would it be to use this on an air-gapped system? On a what system? Air-gapped system. We don't know that's at all. No, oh, and so with no internet. Oof. I don't think it would work. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that Spark is yeah. used with uh, air-gapped systems because it's better than LN and LN. Yeah, I'll do it. Right. Okay. Well, I guess they need to fetch things. Yeah, so you can maybe you can fetch the data on the machine now and actually work. Did people on Zoom hear the answer? Right. Uh, I said, so do you want to repeat the. Uh, yeah, I mean, except you can put the, the things you need to fetch in the login the note. On the login. On the log. Then, yes. Yeah. Um, one question. Uh, oh, hang on. No. Uh, excellent talk. Yes. Uh, is there any understanding yet of if or how performance is affected by running through SPAC or reframe versus manually building and running on the system? <laughs> uh, that's study in progress. Uh, in principle, it should not be affected at all because what uh, reframe does is creating a submit script, builds the way you should be building your executable anyway, and submit it the way you would submit it anyway. So there should not be a difference. But that's one of the things we're planning to verify is happening anyway. Uh, and finally, I also wanted this. Um, are these benchmarking results available publicly at all? The results of running the benchmarks themselves, I guess, is meant. Uh, so we don't, uh, part of this project is not running a bench benchmarking campaign on any system. So we're providing the tools for anyone that wants to do that. So in that sense, there are no data to share. The creation and curation of this data would be something to happen in the future, like Excalibur 2. So, 500 <laughs> in the UK. Mm.